Good morning, Compass Online family. It is Friday. It's the end of the week, but it's the beginning of the week for church. Don't forget, we have services this coming Sunday, a great opportunity for you to connect to our worship experience. Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11.30 a.m., Central Standard Time. You can catch the worship experience on any platform, compasschurch.online, YouTube, and Facebook as well. But right now, we're going to hear from our lead pastor, Drew Sherman, and his wife, Michelle, as they're going to share God's word with us this morning for our Compass Daily. We're also going to hear from our lead worship pastor, Caleb Miller. So grateful that we get to hear God's word every single day throughout the week. I hope it's encouraged you to make sure that you're in your Bible every day, that you're worshiping every day, because we have control over our thoughts and our actions by what we do to receive God's word and to worship God. I hope you're going to be encouraged by what you hear today from Pastor Drew and Michelle. I know that I will be. Make sure you take notes. Make sure you share this on social media. God bless you, and welcome to Compass Daily. Good morning. Welcome to Compass Daily. Super excited to worship with you today. This is my wife, Heidi. I'm looking forward just to lifting up the name of Jesus together. Sing this with me today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind away? It was my tomb.
what's the name above every other name? Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Welcome to Compass Daily. Our mission is navigating people to God, and we're one church in thousands of locations right now. And I just want to say good morning. I'm so thankful for the worship that we just had. Drew and I have worked with Caleb and Heidi for 14 years now, and we are so blessed by their friendship. We love their hearts for worship and for people. And we just want to remind you of something this morning. We want to remind you that your church loves you. We're praying for you, and we can do this. We can practice faith over fear. I love what God is doing at Compass right now. I have never felt more proud of my church than right now. I love my church. So if you love your church, go to the chat section right now and just tell us that. Just type in, I love my church. So this morning, I want to start here, and I just want to tell you that every morning, I read two books without fail. Of course, one is my Bible. I love God's Word. And the other is this book that I want to share with you. It's called New Morning Mercies. I love this devotional. It speaks to my heart every morning. 
It's written by Paul David Tripp, who is a local author. And if you'll allow me, I just want to read you an entry that just meant so much to me a couple of weeks ago, just at the very beginning of this season that we're in. And it says this, it begins with, I looked everywhere. I looked high and low. There wasn't a drawer, a cabinet, or a dark closet that I didn't tear apart in my search. I even went out to the car twice to make sure I hadn't left it there. The file contained important papers, and I had lost it somewhere. It was so frustrating. And after all my searching, it was just as lost as when I had begun. But that night it hit me that my lost file was a picture of how little control I have over my own life. I do not even have sovereignty over my little world to guarantee that I will never lose important things. It can be a bit scary to consider. You and I have very little power and control over the most significant things in our lives. You and I don't know what's going to happen next. We don't have a clue what will be on our plates next week or next month. We have little control over the principal people in our lives little power over the situations in which we live, and almost no control over the locations of our lives. So true. You know, the most significant moment there that she just read was this. You and I have very little power and control over the most significant things in our life. We live under this illusion that we're in control, that we have all the answers, and we live as though we're sitting on top of our own little kingdoms. And one of the things that we're learning from the coronavirus, and trust me, I wish this never would have happened in our world, but one of the things that we are learning is we are not in control. This virus has brought the world to its knees. And we serve a God who takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for good. And what God has done is he has turned a crisis into an accelerator that causes us to learn new behaviors. And that's what's so valuable for this season that we're in. We're learning new habits and new practices that will make us in the long run stronger people and a stronger church. But along with that comes anxiety because of the fear of the unknown. A lot of us are experiencing that right now. So let's talk about where that anxiety is coming from. I love what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six. He says to a very a group of very tired people, he says, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself, each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus says, here's a good idea. You give me tomorrow. Let, let me have it with all of its uncertainty and with all of its pain and all of its ambiguity, and I'll take it. And you just go take a nap or, or read a book or love on your kids. I've got tomorrow. And he means that. The big idea is don't try to control your future. Jesus says, you trust me for the results. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let me have tomorrow and all the troubles that come with it. I'm here for you. So let's take Jesus up on that, you know? Amen. And, you know, I just want to read this next section in this devotion because this is what really spoke volumes to my heart. Honestly, facing your lack of sovereignty over your own life produces either anxiety or relief. And anxiety is God forgetting it's the result of thinking that life is on your shoulders, that it's your job to figure it all out and keep things in order. It's worrisome to think that your job in life is to work yourself into enough control over people, locations, and situations that you can rest assured that you will get what you think you need and accomplish what you think you need to accomplish. If you fall into this way of thinking, your life will be burdened with worry and your heart will be filled with dread. The thing that sticks out to me in that is that anxiety is God forgetting. We forget how faithful and how merciful God is, and we weigh ourselves down with all of our earthly burdens. And also that last line, if you fall into this line of thinking, your heart will be burdened with worry and your heart will be filled with dread. That is so powerful. Because when our hearts are burdened, we tend to be more vulnerable to sin. And worry can evolve into, evolve into sin, especially when we forget about God. Worry becomes sin when we take God completely out of the equation. We all do this. 
Sometimes we have a concern and so then we, it just grows and grows and we create this parallel universe where God doesn't exist and where He can't do His work. We create that illusion and that is where it often leads. We are God forgetting. And it's such a great observation because worry, it's just exhausting. It's a huge obstacle in our life and it's also a joy robber. Solomon said this in Proverbs chapter 12. He, he writes, worry weighs a person down. Worry weighs a person down. What a great verse. And it reminds me of a definition that I've used over the years about worry. Worry is when we carry a burden that God never intended for us mm -hmm. to carry. It's a burden and it's not healthy for us. It's not good for body, mind, or soul. So right now, go to the chat section right now. Go to the chat room and type or post something that you're worried about right now. It can be as simple as I, I'm worried about I'm worried about managing the kids right now at home. They're at home right now, and I'm having to do my job and homeschool and be a mom all at the same time. Or, or maybe you, you have a worry about your job. You're worried about your career right now. Or maybe you have a concern about an elderly parent or a grandparent, and you're worried that they're going to get sick or something like that. Put that burden right now in the chat section. Just share your burden. And then here's what I want, church. I want you to rise up. And those of us that are also there, we need to support these people that are writing these worries down, writing these burdens into the chat room. And I want you just to say, hey, I got that for you. I'm going to intercede in prayer right now. I'm going to pray over you right now as we speak. I'm going to get that burden and I'm going to give it up to God for you. And so worry is a burden that God never intended for us to carry alone. I love the moment where Jesus is speaking in Matthew chapter 11, and he's speaking to a group of very, very weary people, very tired people in the first century. But he's also speaking to all of us right now in 2020. <laughs> And I'm going to read this to you from Matthew chapter 11 with the message paraphrase, the message translation. And so here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to close your eyes and listen to the words of Jesus. Here's what he says. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I love that. I love that moment where he says we need to learn the unforced rhythms of grace in our life. And what I'm praying is that during this time of, of self-containment and social distancing, that we will, all of us, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I can say with a great amount of certainty that Jesus does not want us to carry a burden that's called worry. He doesn't want us to carry anxiety. He hates what anxiety does to people. He hates how it weighs us down. Jesus hates how it makes us small and selfish and timid, how it chokes joy, how it kills dreams, and it stills our day one hour at a time. Let me say this better. Jesus hates worry, but he loves worriers. It's okay if you're a worrier. Jesus loves worriers, but he doesn't want you to stay worried. In the eyes of Jesus, you are worth so much. You know, I love Luke 12 because in verse six of that chapter, it says this, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You are more important than a sparrow, and yet God has his eye on that sparrow. And that is just so beautiful. It's one of my very favorite passages in the Gospels. It's just awesome. So let me go back to this devotion and finish this up and reading you this last paragraph. Instead of being God forgetting, there's a much better way. It is being God remembering. It rests in the relief that although it may not look like it, your life is under the careful control of one who defines wisdom, power, and love. In all of those moments when life is out of your control, it is not out of his control. I love that so much. Instead of being God forgetting, the better way is to be God remembering. 
And I love that last line. In all of these moments when life is out of control, it is not out of His control. Maybe that's God's message to you today. Maybe that's why you tuned in this morning. Maybe you came to hear 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on Him, meaning Jesus, because He cares for you. We need to hear that because sometimes we get so worried about tomorrow. We get so worried about the troubles of tomorrow, about finances, about kids, about college, about a loved one getting sick. And we have these moments of anxiety. And Peter says, you can cast or fling your worries on my friend Jesus because he has really, really big shoulders. Would you pray with me right now? Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for this morning, and I thank you for this time that, that we get to gather together as um, a, the body of Christ, that we get to study your word and to um, join in this together. And Lord, I just pray your blessing on all of us right now, Lord, and I pray that you would forgive us for being God-forgetting. And I pray, Lord, that you will Help us to be God remembering. Help us to remember that you are in control. You're in control of our life. You're in control of our families. You're in control of our children. You're in control of coronavirus, Lord. And we just need to trust you. Help us to be a God remembering people. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much. And, and just remember, we're praying for you. We love you. We want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in so many ways. I love how our church is engaging in so many different studies and in Zoom calls, and, and we're engaging in prayer, and we're doing community service. So even though we're not meeting in a physical location, I want you to join me in continuing to be generous. When you and I uh, continue our commitment to giving, it's not only continuing the work of Compass, but it's also helping our community and it's impacting people all around the world. I have some very special people on my mind this morning thinking about our friends Ajay and Indu Law at Central India Christian Mission. And you know, the coronavirus is very, very bad in India. And because of the mass population, uh, they, it's very difficult for them to achieve social distancing. And so I'm fearful of what could be around the corner for them. And so we need to pray for them. And I thinking specifically about the children at the Children's Home in Raigar. You know, several years ago, our church invested over a half million dollars in our Rygar Children's Home. This is a children's home for special needs children. And so we have this amazing home where these kids are learning and they're learning about Jesus. And, and many of them are blind and many of them are deaf. And it's just an amazing ministry. And so our hearts are with them. Right now, would you go into the chat section and say, I'll pray for the children of India. I will pray for them. And uh, I want you to do that. Intercede on their behalf right now. So when we engage in generosity at Compass, it's just a lot more than ministering to people in Colleyville or Roanoke or, or out at NFW or NRH. It, it's about helping people globally as well. You can continue to be generous by clicking on the Give button at the top of the video player or click on the link of the chat room or comment section. Or you can simply text the words Compass Church to 77 Nine seven seven. Don't forget to stay connected also to Compass Online for our worship experiences. In fact, two days from now on Sunday, I'll bring the third message, Bad Boys of Easter. And it's, it's about the criminals on the cross. And we have great messages through all the campuses uh, this weekend on Facebook Live and YouTube. And so we want to encourage you to engage and be a part of Palm Sunday this Sunday. Don't forget also about Compass Daily, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. You get to hear different pastors and different leaders speak their heart, and of course, all of our amazing worship leaders. We're in this together with you, praying for you, trusting our great God. Thanks for joining us at Compass Online today, and let's let Caleb and Heidi finish this today with more worship. God bless you. Trust in more.
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Wow, Compass family, I love being able to hear from our lead pastor and his wife, Michelle. Every time they teach us, I'm so inspired and encouraged by what they have to say and how God is moving in their life. You know, in this season of being exclusively church online, it's a beautiful way for us to connect through a camera lens, through an iPod, through a a, a camera, through a, a laptop, through a tablet, whatever that looks like for you. We are the church coming together to worship and receive God's word. I hope you did just that today. I hope you received God's word for your life and that you will be encouraged today no matter what you face. Just as a reminder for you, we're going to have worship experiences this Sunday, 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Don't miss that. Pastor Drew is going to be bringing the message. You don't want to miss it. We're going to be encouraged by God's word. We're going to lift up his name through worship. I'm excited about that. Have a great weekend. Love on your kids. Hang out with them. Have fun. And God bless you. And thanks for joining us at Compass Daily.